What's going on, fellas? I got a pretty cool discovery here to share with you today. Anyone who's ever built a oxyhydrogen torch knows that foam can be a real showstopper. I have come up with many attempts and designs to mitigate that issue, this secondary reservoir being one of them, but this thing only buys you time. It's not a solution. After some extensive research and some adjustments in nomenclature, I was able to find the proper keywords that led me to information that teaches us how industry deals with foam and processes. Essentially, what I've uncovered is that um, back in the old days, they would often use oil before they had any of the complex uh, surfacants and stuff like that. So, what I decided to try to do was uh, just get some oil. I didn't have any mineral oil to try, so I decided to try the next best thing, which is this stuff right here. This is mobile velocity number 10. Now, unfortunately, this company, um, bluechipmachineshop.com, sent me this stuff telling me it's for my spindle bearing. But uh, either they're wrong or the manufacturers of the oil are wrong because mobile velocity number 10 is actually an aviation oil. It can be made to specific velo uh, viscosities. Perhaps that's what's happened here is that this is aviation oil that's been um, turned into something they call a zero clearance oil. This is supposed to be a number three, zero clearance oil, and yet they sent me this stuff, so not too happy about that. At any rate, I just because of the properties of aviation oil, it has um, extremely powerful um, water resistant properties, so I decided to give it a go. You can see the amount that I have in there, the discoloration of that oil is due to the accumulation of rust that um, leaches off the plates from me running this thing at high amperage. I've been doing that for testing purposes. At any rate, a lot of people were showing videos of them using the spa treatment defoamer products. That's a bad idea, guys. Not only does it not last longer than the video that they posted on the internet, but it also destroys your anode. It will turn your anode black. I'll try and find a video of the gentleman that shares this with us, and I'll post a link in the description. However, my findings concluded that it doesn't work based on the principle you have to keep dumping it in there and dumping it in there, and eventually your cell will grow this weird gelatinous crystalline structure in the center. It's a pretty big mess you have to deal with. But at any rate, let's check this oil out, guys, and see what happens. I'm gonna turn the pumps on somewhat low. I don't even have to use the ultrasonic transducer that I have installed, though I have been testing that. I have a small driver sitting there. So, you see the flow rate we're gonna get. I'm gonna turn this thing on 10 amps, because that's a uh, pretty common operating uh, level for my uses. Just to start, we're gonna examine that. But as you can see by the foam, it's the type of bubbles that pop very fast. It's not a real foamy um, fluid. I wish I could get a better shot of it somehow. I'm like pressing all over lethal lines here. Now I've been running this cell for uh, hours and hours trying to get it to re-foam up. And from what I've been told, or what I've read anyway, and some books that were written for um, industrial process management. Um, oil is a fantastic foam mitigation additive. The only problem I have with this particular uh, practice is that I use goop glue to seal my joints and they are not compatible with oil at all. In fact, you can remove goop glue with oil. So that's a concern. I am going to test mineral oil because mineral oil is not um, reactive with sodium hydroxide some oils i don't know which ones do something called soapification olive oil and um, castor oil things like that actually turn into soap and it can take up to three weeks for it to happen from what i've read so i'm not going to give you guys the go ahead on this process until three weeks have passed um, we're going to look at this in about a month, actually. I'm going to give it a whole month of me just sitting here running this thing and checking it out. 
So far, fellas, this thing is doing fantastic. Uh, give me one second, I'll turn it on full power. Okay, now the electrolyte I have in here is only rich enough for about 15 amps. And that is about 1600 watts of power. Substantial amount of gas output. Uh, I'm gonna have to actually open this valve. Oops, <laughs> you can see that's pressuring up like crazy. This thing's really going crazy now. Uh, we might actually get a foam over a vent. Let's hope not. I need to turn the fan on. Temperature is a big thing with foam also. I have discovered that if you can keep a cell at 70 degrees, it won't foam without any additives or nothing like that. Man, maybe I better fire up the ultrasonic transducer. I'm not prepared here. So far, so good. It, it doesn't look very happy, but it's stabilizing. Maybe I should turn these pumps up some. I'm gonna turn the pump up to full blast. That seems to help break those oil droplets up. And from the literature that I've been browsing through has said is that the oil droplets size is what breaks down the foam. It falls right into the bubble or something like that, causes it to collapse. So it's all about the size. As we can see, it's actually recovering here now that the pump has been turned up. This oil is working amazing, you guys. I'm just so happy. I've been messing around with these torches for 10 years. Not every day, of course, but off and on. And you would not believe some of the complex menageries of design that I've tried to use to mitigate foam. I have the videos. I'll post all the links in the description if I find the time, that is. They are in a um, playlist that I have. So as you can see, this stuff is performing amazing. You can actually turn that down a little bit. It's splashing up into my top um, discharge. I don't have a baffle for my discharge because I'm patient as usual so it likes the pump being on high that's why I chose this setup with the pump I wanted that water to knock them bubbles into gas to pop them bubbles you can see here man I wish you could see what I can see I have got to get a new camera because a lot of what I'm trying to show you guys is often invisible with my junk equipment these bubbles, you can tell by looking at them that they're going to pop really fast. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You can tell by looking at bubbles if they're soapy bubbles or if they're bubbles of glass. Okay, we've been running at about 15 amps for quite a while there. The diodes are getting pretty warm. I'm going to shut this off and let's watch how fast the uh, foam is completely reduced. As you can see, quite quickly we have recovered from that. If I shut it off, there is uh, basically no foam. Nothing like what we would normally see, guys. And you see how small of an amount of oil I've used. There's a possibility that uh, a guy would want to throw a little bit more oil in there. Or a girl, I guess, whoever. That's as far as I'm going with that. Yeah, so I'm kind of in love with this oil thing. However, the conclusion cannot be provided for at least three weeks because I've read some uh, soap recipes. This goes to show you how far I have to go into my research, guys. I've been reading about soap all damn day. So during my joys of reading about soap, I discovered that some of these processes are required to sit for three weeks. And I would imagine that's because of the room temperature the reaction takes place at. I read a long time ago somewhere in a chemistry book that every 10 degrees Celsius you add to a reaction doubles the rate of that reaction. I don't know if that holds true to every chemical reaction, but this uh, cell runs at a, right around 100 degrees typically at 10 amps, which is what I've had it running at for about an hour here now. And um, you would think that that would accelerate the soapification process. Now, I'm not familiar with a lot of this nomenclature, so if I'm mispronouncing this stuff, feel free to politely correct me in the comment section. 
you can be rude if you want, but I don't think you're going to like what I'm going to say to you. So there it is, fellas. I had to share that with you guys, man, because it's an amazing find for me. Um, the entire internet has been looking for a solution to this problem, and they have offered nothing. I even had a good uh, HHO buddy um, recommend switching over to pure potassium hydroxide. That didn't work for me, homeboy. In fact, it made it worse. And I believe it has to do with the polyethylene tubing. Polyethylene tubing is only a three out of four on the compatibility chart with solutions above 20%. What that tells me is that some sulfification of the uh, polymers in this plastic has taken place and that's why you get foam. The reason why I know it's not the sodium hydroxide or the potassium hydroxide that causes foam in your cell is because when you throw in a fresh batch of electrolyte, tell me this, doesn't it always last? for the first several hours or the first day or two and run flawlessly and then all of a sudden the dreaded foam arrives that's because a chemical reaction is taking place with something in this system there are a lot of guys who can build these things out of available materials they have that are completely compatible with the electrolytes we're using they do not suffer these problems however me being um, lazy I guess you would call it I, a lot of these products were purchased at Menards and Menards just simply isn't equipped to build cool stuff. Unless it's a deck or a house. So here's the plan, fellas. I'm gonna run this bad boy for about a month. Um, and I'm gonna switch over to mineral oil because I know for a fact mineral oil does not soapify with sodium hydroxide. I'll also show you guys what this torch is doing these days as far as output. Um, I don't know if I'll have time today, but I discovered this cap was loose the last time I showed it to you guys when I ran it at 2,000 watts. We were running a leaky machine, man, so I feel robbed of some torch I probably don't deserve anyway, but I still like just wanted to show you guys this thing can do a lot more than what we've seen when I first put it back together. And the reason why that's important to me is because the main process involved me changing out my gaskets to achieve the two millimeter optimum gasket spacing that was depicted in some research I discovered that was done by the EOD, meaning a lot of money was put into those figures. And they said specifically that electrolyzers used for electrolysis operate at an optimum level with a two millimeter gap. There's just something to do with the bubble and the flow rate and the voltage um, resistance of a gap that size. You get too big, the resistance is too high. If you go too small, the bubbles cause so much polarization of the plates, meaning they're covered in bubbles, that you literally lose active surface area. So it's like your cell literally shrinks because the bubbles rob it of surface area. So the two millimeter is that happy median that allows the bubbles to escape the plate and it's still not too much for the voltage to pass. And there you have it. I'm going to shut up, guys, because I can talk about this damn thing all night. I'm so happy the oil's working. So I'll see you in three weeks on this subject. And we're going to switch over to mineral oil that I believe is going to be a lot cleaner. Maybe better, but you never know. Um, I tried mineral oil years ago on an electrolysis cell that didn't have um, coils like this. And I got worried about um, hydrogen reacting with the mineral oil. That was what it was. Okay, I remember now. Hydrogen gas does weird stuff to things. And it did something weird to the mineral oil, I think. And I think that's why I abandoned the mineral oil uh, foam process. It didn't work well in my last cell, but that doesn't mean it won't work in this one. That was a wet cell. This is a dry cell. So... All right, I said I was going to shut up like five minutes ago, and I'm just still really yapping out on you here. But uh, I'll holler at you, fellas. Be safe, man. So here's the plan, fellas. I'm going to run this bad boy for about a month. Um, and I'm going to switch over to mineral oil because I know for a fact mineral oil does not soapify with sodium hydroxide. I'll also show you guys what this torch is doing these days as far as output. Um, I don't know if I'll have time 
today, but I discovered this cap was loose the last time I showed it to you guys when I ran it at 2,000 watts. We were running a leaky machine, man, so I feel robbed of some torch I probably don't deserve anyway, but I still like just wanted to show you guys this thing can do a lot more than what we see when I first put it back together. And the reason why that's important to me is because the main process involved me changing out my gaskets to achieve the two millimeter optimum gasket spacing that was depicted in some research I discovered that was done by the EOD, meaning a lot of money was put into those figures. And they said specifically that electrolyzers used for electrolysis operate at an optimum level with a two millimeter gap. There's just something to do with the bubble and the flow rate and the voltage um, resistance of a gap that size. You get too big, the resistance is too high. If you go too small, the bubbles cause so much polarization of the plates, meaning they're covered in bubbles, that you literally lose active surface area. So it's like your cell literally shrinks because the bubbles rob it of surface area. So the two millimeter is that happy median that allows the bubbles to escape the plate and it's still not too much for the voltage to pass. And there you have it. I'm gonna shut up guys because I can talk about this damn thing all night. I'm so happy the oil's working. So I'll see you in three weeks on this subject and we're gonna switch over to mineral oil that I believe is gonna be a lot cleaner, maybe better, but you never know. Um, I tried mineral oil years ago on electrolysis cell that didn't have um, coils like this. And I got worried about um, hydrogen reacting with the mineral oil. That was what it was. Okay, I remember now. Hydrogen gas does weird stuff to things. And it did something weird to the mineral oil, I think. And I think that's why I abandoned the mineral oil uh, foam process. It didn't work well in my last cell, but that doesn't mean it won't work in this one. That was a wet cell. This is a dry cell, so. All right, I said I was gonna shut up like five minutes ago and I'm just still really yapping out on you here. But uh, I'll holler at you fellas. Be safe, man. Hey fellas, one more thing I wanna point out about foam in your HHO torch is that um, you'll see a lot of, uh, of these HHOers, as they call themselves, they hook this crap up to their car. Um, they, they have a lot to say about um, oil residue being the cause of foam and your cell. And that's just total nonsense. And the reason I know that is even after you clean the cell out, it still doesn't. And if it was oil residue, after a period of time, the sodium hydroxide would consume all of the residual and would thereby have actively cleaned the cell of any further reaction which does not happen. It, it continually happens again and again and again. So cleaning the cell out with vinegar and doing all these crazy processes to, to passivate it and all that. Passivating is a bunch of bullshit. Um, scraping the plates and all that stuff they do is all just a bunch of pseudoscience nonsense. Um, kind of like the prospect of hooking HHO up to your car. It's total bullshit. And uh, I just wanted to elaborate on that, that um, you gotta watch what you're listening to in the HHO community because I've taken a lot of advice from these HHO head honchos in the past and was let down tremendously. And they leave the videos up. Like, why would you leave a video up telling people to put pool spa in your damn torch when it ruins the damn thing? Like within days, it's inoperable again. It's like, and yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna leave this video up and try and get 400,000 views and uh, screw over 400,000 people is basically what the way I see it. So I want to shed some light on this, guys. For you people who really want to build a torch that actually works. If you want to hook one of these things up for your car, you come to the wrong place. And you're not going to like what I tell you. It's all lies. If it was real, a lot of people would be getting rich off of it, myself included. But it's fake. And uh, don't listen to some of these HHO people. They don't have a damn clue what the hell they're talking about. First of all, not all oils make soap. Second of all, um, I've been running this thing continuously almost for two days with the, uh, well maybe not that long, but for a long, long time. This thing would have foamed over 
way, way long earlier than now. So definitely a lot to be said about that. Um, the foam is caused, I believe, by a reaction with the tubing we use in the gaskets. It's, it's making soap and um, doesn't have nothing to do with residual oil in the system. I think that's just a total guess. It's like, how could you prove that? And then there's people online selling these anti-foam solutions, which are nothing more than silicone-based products that you can get online that are known anti-foaming agents for industrial processes. I'm just using oil because that's what I have. Um, the silicone oil is something I might test eventually, but uh, mineral oil for now is gonna be the next test. I just wanted to shed some light on that misconception and that lie that people are saying it's oil residual in your cell that's causing the foaming. That's just total nonsense. It has nothing to do with that. Um, you can see that I have gobs of oil in this cell right now. It's about almost an eighth inch thick layer of oil. So we'll see how it goes though. We'll see if it turns into soap over the next three weeks. I've been doing a lot of research, guys, on foaming in industrial processes. And I recently switched my electrolyte over to potassium hydroxide because some YouTubers had told me that potassium hydroxide does not cause foam. Well, it turns out potassium hydroxide, even pure food grade, caused more foam than my sodium hydroxide electrolytes ever did. So I drained that stuff out of there. I'm now running oil as an anti-foaming agent. This is uh, very thin spindle bearing oil. Now the literature that I've been reading, silicone oil is the best, however the silicone spray that I have has other substances in it so it doesn't count as silicone. As you can see here, it's probably still full of foam. Well, it isn't now. This is silicone spray, but uh, it was awfully full of foam. I may still try this, but I think what I'd rather do is just get some actual silicone oil, some pure silicone oil, because that stuff has rust inhibitors in it. And you can't just go throwing anything into an electrolyzer, fellas. Um, very complex organic chemicals are actually manufactured through the electrolysis process in systems like this. So just thinking you can throw just anything in here and you're not gonna get any secondary reactions is very uninformed. I've, I've been researching electrolysis for 10 years and have read quite a bit of information on the subject. And um, back in the old days, they would make all types of exotic chemicals. Hydrogen peroxide is one of them. And what they would do is they would alter the size ratio of the anode versus the cathode. For example, they would have this massive cathode and a real tiny little wire anode. Changing the electrode size ratio can alter the reactions you get. So this electrolysis of water process is not as cut and dry as some of these HHO enthusiasts have uh, led one to believe. It's actually a lot more actual science going on um, I don't believe in hooking this stuff up to a car this is not one of those videos do not hook an HHO machine up to your car please spare yourself but at any rate guys so far this oil is working as a very good defoaming agent um, I do have the piezoelectric transducer in place the upper side transducer this driver circuit just not very good it's not powerful enough um, ultrasonic transducers do not remove foam guys I have several videos on me attempting to use it for that now there are some devices that can operate externally perhaps if I put a horn on this it would work better but um, for the most part the piezoelectric transducer isn't helping anything this stuff right here does not work. Don't put this stuff in your um, HHO torches. It um, ruins the plates and it doesn't last. You got to keep putting it in there and keep putting it in there. I also have a video on that that shows you what happens after a while of doing that. And there's also another gentleman who takes a cell apart and shows how black the anode gets 
it completely destroys the anode. I don't know the secondary side effects of this oil. I highly doubt that you can electrolyze oil. It might depolymerize or something. I don't know what's going to happen to it, but uh, I doubt it's going to do anything bad to my cell. If anything, it's going to lubricate my water pump. But I don't know. Let's hope for the best. So far, so good. It's not foaming up really bad yet, but it is showing signs of increasing in foam. Which kind of worries me. So far, so good though. This thing would be overflowing like crazy if I was just on the pure electrolyte. The one thing that I'm thinking is a lot of that has to do with this foaming is this tubing. It's got to be the tubing because I've read some chemical compatibility charts and polyethylene is only a, a, a C, I think, on the compatibility, or a B, I'm sorry, which means it does have a slight effect on it, the sodium hydroxide solution. I think that's where the soapification is coming from because when you run the system brand new with just a new electrolyte, it doesn't foam at all, not a bit. Over time, however, it achieves this very foamy attribute, which is leading me to believe um, there's some type of secondary reaction taking place with the polyethylene tubing that I'm using. Okay. Things are starting to foam up a little bit here more than they normally were. I might want to uh, put some more foaming or some more oil in there. This thing has not been running for a long enough time to determine whether or not the oil has worked at all. However, it does appear to have an effect. Oh crap. I just turned the torch off without turning my torch off. This part of it. <laughs> we about got to see a flashback there. You can see that transducer does uh, clear things up quite quickly in there. It's just not powerful enough. Definitely got some foam crap going on, but the oil seems to be working a little bit. Not 100%, but uh, I'll let you know how it goes. I'm still battling this foam thing after years. I have a system set up here with this secondary catch that does work for most jobs that I do. But as far as using the same electrolyte for like, it's like a year old, you just can't do it. It's just too much foam. and. Uh, Wanted to give the oil a try. Just thought I'd show you guys what it looks like. And so far, so good. I mean, we do get a lot of foam. But uh, hopefully it doesn't start foaming over on itself like it does. Let's hope for that. But that's where I am just fooling around with this thing tonight. Just got done reading about the oil being used for the old uh, anti-foaming agents in industrial processes and just had to come out here and give it a try. It's like midnight, so <laughs> nice and cool in here at least, but uh, nonetheless, that's where we are. The oil seems to be helping. I might have to put more in there though. I need to get some silicone oil and try that. They seem to be saying the silicone oil is the best. Do not put the foaming agent in these things. So this is gonna be one heck of an experiment here that I may regret, but sometimes you just gotta take one for the team. You can see my foam column has risen, but that could just be due to the fact that the temperature of the air bubbles is hotter than it was earlier. So naturally, they're gonna be a little bit bigger than we saw. And because there's hundreds of them and thousands of them, you're going to get a significant increase in volume with this foam. The foam still looks very fluid, though. It's not foamy in the sense that it just looks like You can see how fast those bubbles are popping. They look really nice. They have a nice look to them. That's not the deadly foam of death that we're all accustomed to dreading, that we hate, that destroys our dreams. This stuff will kill the most, the best of hydrogen torches, and it's just a shame. But man, that oil is doing a heck of a job.
The thinner the oil, the better, from what I read. They were even talking about using kerosene and fuel oils, but as I said, that's out of the picture for me. I'm not, uh, I don't want that stuff here because I don't want it to alter my HHO flame. I, I like this flame and that's what I want. I don't, if I want to mix it, I have a gas diffuser here that I infuse acetone into the gas with, but not. So I'm going to shut up now, fellas. I just had to share this little finding with you. Um, as I've said, I put years of research into this, guys. So by no means am I a novice. I've tried mesh inside of here, ultrasonic transducer shooting through the side into the foam, everything. Nothing, uh, I'm gonna shut that ultrasonic transducer down and see if these bubbles here change any. It may have had a hand on them. The ultrasonic transducer is off. You can see I just got a driver. It's, it's just a test driver. you that it does do something. I'll turn it off here. You can see the, uh, the column. Now when I plug it in, you'll see it immediately has an effect. You see that? So it does have an effect. It's just not uh, very powerful. So, so far so good. As I said, fellas, I'm gonna pin a comment to constantly update you on this. I'm gonna post the findings anyway because they have had a good effect already, oil has. And uh, silicone oil is what we wanna be trying. I didn't have any on hand tonight. It's midnight. And uh, and you can see how thick of a layer of oil I've actually put in the thing. There might be a little bit more in there. Let's see if I fire up this ultrasonic transducer. It just might uh, throw a little bit more up to the top. No, not really clearing it up. Get some thrust pond it makes right there though. That almost makes me wonder if, if a guy could build some type of uh, thruster water out of one of these things like some type of propellerless thrust system because it does put a lot of power through that water that will melt plastic from that far away i've actually burned a hole in the side of this canister you see that little thing right there, that spot that's a borehole that was burnt through i had a uh trans a piezoelectric transducer for ultrasonic system right here it shot a beam through that water to the other side of the cell and proceeded to bore a hole right through it so i had to shut it down and that's why it's on the bottom now it's facing up but uh i'm gonna shut up now and get this posted just had to share that little finding with you guys because years of reading about this stuff and i never bothered trying oil as a anti-foaming agent and it's working out great this thing's been running for hours and the foam still looks really good you can see those large bubbles they're popping really fast that's what we want to see that's without the ultrasonic transducer plugged in this oil alone is doing a great job. I didn't put hardly that much in there at all. I think it's about three liters per minute at 10 amps. I can't remember. And I haven't tested this new cell configuration. I'm up to a two millimeter gasket now versus uh, 1.3. No subtle differences make a huge effect in efficiency, whether good or bad. And I'm just gonna show you guys this. How powerful that ultrasonic transducer is. 
I really want to try to build some kind of propulsion system using one of these. I wonder if it'd be more effective than a propeller at high speeds. Because at high speeds, propellers cause a lot of drag in themselves. And that's just like a little five watt board. That board can't be more than five watts. I can't remember what it is, but it's the lowest power um, ultrasonic transducer I've ever seen. So, I ran this thing for quite a while, fellas, and it is showing no foam characteristics. That's how much oil I got in there. Just barely enough to cause a little layer. Stuff doesn't look so great, but I don't care about that. I am just amazed at how well this oil is working as a defoaming agent. I'm gonna go ahead and just post this finding, keep you guys updated. I'm just, I know this thing would have been foamed over by now. But in the past, I have thought I had the problem solved. Then two, three weeks later, the device starts to foam again. So there's probably going to be a part two. Let's hook them up. Yes, yeah, so just remember that, fellas. You got to watch out for this HHO crowd, man. Some of them are some slivering, slimy shysters that uh, can't imagine why they would leave these videos up that are just misleading us the way they are, and they claim to be some kind of HHO guru on their channel. So. Just take everything that you hear online with a grain of salt. You have to research it to death. You don't have to take my word for it, but uh, my channel is pretty much based on honesty and finding the truth. It's not about being seen as being better than anybody. In fact, I've discovered it makes you hated by everyone for the most part. A lot of people tend to jump onto these uh, pseudoscientist bandwagons, so when you attack their, their god, if you want to call them that, they get a little pissy. So just uh, watch out for yourself, man. And if you want to build a hydrogen torch, there are things you can do with these things that you can't with just oxy hydrogen or with acetylene. Oxy acetylene. Why can I not say oxy acetylene? Is it hard to say? So there you go. I wouldn't mess with um, any of them defoaming agents, none of that crap. And uh, hopefully this update show some success because i'm so happy that this thing's finally working it hasn't um been a problem that i could solve for the last 10 years i mean i can make the torch work where i can use it but my goal has always been a hundred percent duty cycle which means i can run that torch at 15 amps or so you don't want to pull more than 15 amps out of your wall that's kind of freaky you don't know who wired the house you don't know what the junctions are made of i've seen guys use other sockets as a junction and they've done a horrible job. So you go pull 20 amps through that shitty electric job and uh, you could eventually cause a fire hazard over time, stressing the outlet, I feel. So I don't like to run that thing at 100% duty cycle at 20 amps. That's a in and out thing. But um, 15 amps is common for me to run it for 10, 20 minutes at a time. And the foam has just been such a devastating aspect of this journey that um, I've almost wanted to give up on it, but uh, the oil is definitely working out. Man, I have been yapping for two minutes here. Jeez. Shutting up, fellas. Don't listen to them HHO idiots. They don't know what the hell they're talking about, bro. But I just want to add, not all of them are bad. Some of them are uh, some pretty good people. Some of them have made some pretty good discoveries for the guys who actually want to use these to build torches. Um, these torches work great for glass that I've seen, so a lot of people have been using them for that. Other than that, they're just kind of a DIY thing. Um, probably something you're never going to see in industry for a lot of reasons, but there you go. Shutting up again. Not all HHO people are a bunch of lying assholes. Uh, just most of them. So, I apologize to any innocent individual who may be offended by my blatant disregard. But I say this with anger because take these damn videos down for crying out loud. If the advice you give is misinforming people, what kind of jerk are you to leave that up there? Take down your whole damn channel. You can't hook HHO up to your car. Hello, it's like 10 years later and you guys are still putting gas in your car. But yet, you wouldn't believe the people that I had 
hating me eight years ago on YouTube, nine years ago. I was like an HHO Viking. I would attack these people like a rabid dog, man. Like I got blocked from so many channels. Electric Ride, that dude hated me so bad. Oh man, I think he took his channel down. He might've got sued from putting all that shit in people's cars. Cause he was one of the guys I think that was actually running some kind of shop. That gave him access to the opportunity to actually sell this bullshit to the public. And uh, I feel for the people that were unwittingly duped into this. Um, it really bothers me. I've got a lot of good friends who still believe in the whole Stanley Meyer um, fallacy. It's not real, guys. I mean, to say that that type of technology is suppressed is just, it's stupid. Um, if it worked, then it's, it's been unsuppressed. I mean, the whole damn world knows about it, but yet, when's the last time you seen someone driving down the road with an HHO cell hooked up to their car? I mean, it's not that hard to do. I mean, everybody who owns a soldering iron would be saving money on gas if it was real. Just an objective observation is able to determine that it's a lie. And, um... I don't want to start another HHO war, so I apologize to the HHO community if you're watching this. Um, we've been through this battle like eight, nine years ago, so there's no need to kill me again. Um, you guys did a pretty thorough job of explaining to me how stupid I am, yet 10 years later, here we are, and not one of you have an HHO cell hooked up to your car. Um, I don't even think zero fossil fuel messes around with this stuff anymore. So. He's another guy um, who I know hated my guts, but he was a real respectful individual. I don't know if Zero Fossil Fuel was maybe just um, misled, you know, but um, he seems like a smart enough guy to, where he would have figured it out, you know. That's why I feel like maybe he's just another charlatan, but I don't want to call a guy stupid. It's like I'm stuck. Either he's a charlatan or he's a dumbass. I don't... And I, I'm calling him that because he had such a strong opinion about being right about Faraday's law being wrong. I don't think that he exceeded the limits of Faraday's law. I think he exceeded the limits of his intelligence, which I say that as nice as possible. I mean, I think he was a nice guy. Could be wrong. So uh, I'm going to shut up because you've got way better things to do in life than listen to me yap about stuff that happened eight years ago. I would like to add one thing regarding HHO and the use of IC engines. I did come across some literature, some German literature from the 1940s and 50s that discussed um, diesel engines benefiting from the injection of hydrogen. I didn't say nothing about oxygen, it was hydrogen. And they did this in blimps, I think. It was in one of the blimps, the Zeppelins. They were using the hydrogen to make their diesel engines run more efficiently so for some of the guys that are involved in semi trucks with the HHO you know I really don't have the right to say that that doesn't work I don't believe in it personally but um, just for the sake of saving face there is a, a glimmer of, of hope for diesel engines that um, injecting hydrogen into them could increase their efficiency. However, that efficiency is gained by energy lost elsewhere. I mean, cradle to crib thermodynamics describe the whole picture. So putting an HHO system on board, in my opinion, does not fit the criteria of the demonstration they used with these Zeppelins that had diesel engine propellers on them or whatever they were doing. But um, I believe adding hydrogen that was produced at an exuberant expenditure of energy could in fact be injected into a diesel engine to gain marginal efficiency increases that are no way justified by the resources required to obtain that result however you know like i said i i don't I'm, know everything or claim to be a know-it-all i know for a fact it doesn't work in cars because if you do the math on just the amount of gas that's going into the cylinder, uh, an internal combustion engine on the average small car brings in like 260 cubic foot per minute or something like that. So when you divide three to five liters per minute up, 
your like 0.001% gas ratio, which is so far from combustible levels that it's ridiculous to say that's doing anything. I mean, this, the damn piston goes up and down 50 times a second. To think that three liters a minute is providing enough gas to do anything is just preposterous. I could go all day about why it's bullshit, but I'm not. I just wanted to, for you guys who um, appear to have a legitimate business selling this stuff to semi-trucks, um, there's a possibility that works. I don't believe it. However, I will not discount that 100%. Um, as I said, I think the only reason the Germans did it is because they were flying a damn Zeppelin, which was uh, conveniently full of hydrogen gas. So, I don't know where I'm going with this. Nowhere, apparently. So, there you have it, guys. I'm done wasting your time, finally. I hope this saves somebody from making some really stupid mistakes.